last new part of level two. Yay! And then we can move on to the formative assessment. Okay, so we are going to be graphing tables. So this part is just a little bit trickier because there's a lot of pieces to it. So let's do a quick graphing review because we haven't talked about that since the beginning of the year. Oh my goodness. So let's remind ourselves of a few important things. One is a scale. This is what you count by. So make sure you write this in your notes so you remember. So remember your scales, whatever you count by. So you can count by ones, twos, fives, tens, whatever is going to be easiest based off of your situation, which I'll show you in our example here in a moment. We also need to do labels. We have real world situations and we have things that are being compared and we need to label which one is which because that goes along with our scale. Whatever we're counting by, it might depend depending on what we're talking about. So labels are the things that are being compared, what's being compared. Then this whole run, then jump idea. So remember when we graph, we have to do the X and then the Y. Remember X is the one that goes um, right and left, right? So we have to go to the right or left first. Then we go up or down. Okay, so X comes first, then Y. So notice how it's like we have to do the red before we can do the green, right? It has to like we can't. We don't get the green light yet until we've done this right, okay? So let's remember those things as we start to graph. But before we graph, we need to complete our table just like we learned in the last video. So it says five gallons of gasoline cost $15. Complete the table and graph, okay? So again, we just want to be able to fill in what we have in the table first, and then we'll look for that comparison. So I noticed that five gallons of gasoline is on here, so we know that we're going to put the 15 right below it. And the connection between five and 15, you might notice, is times three. So that means the gallons are always going to be times three to get the cost, okay? So we need to think what times three gives us three, and that would just be one. Most times that's what we'll start with, not always, but most times, okay? Now this one, we already know the gallons, so we're just going to take 6 times 3 to get 18. This time we need to think what times 3 will give us 24, and that's going to be 8, okay? So now that we have our table completed, which by the way, if you want to go back and rewatch the um, last video, which was... Um, to G, I believe, you want to uh, feel free to do that, but otherwise we're going to keep moving forward with graphing, but that's how we learned how to do this table here, okay? All right, so if you remember, the first thing we need to, uh, or the first two things we need to get figured out are scale and labels. So we're going to start by labeling which one is which, okay? So I've got gallons of gas and cost. So I'm going to take this top row, which represents gallons of gas, and that is what I'm going to label my X, okay? So the top row is always going to be your X in our case, okay? And notice we're not graphing on a four quadrants um, graph. We're just doing one quadrant, right? So these are all going to be positive numbers we're dealing with. So the other one we're labeling is cost, and that's going to be our Y axis. So we want gallons of gas on the bottom, cost um, on our Y axis, okay? Now we know that right here at the corner is just zero, so we want just zero there. It's zero for the X and zero for the Y. So this would be like if we didn't get any gallons of gas, it would not cost us any money. So now we need to figure out what we're going to count by. So now our table, I don't want to jump around, right? Like each line has to be worth the same amount. So I'm not going to label it five, six, eight. I'm not doing that. Mm -mm. What we're going to do is since these are fairly low numbers, we're just going to label it by ones on the bottom. Okay, I don't really need to count by twos. You could if you wanted to, but since I've got some odd numbers on there, I'm just going to count by ones. So go ahead and label each tick mark. And yes, you do need to label every single tick mark. I know it seems like a lot, but you need to do it. Um, so go ahead and label one, two, three, four, etc. It should take you all the way to 10. Pause the video if you need to do that. Okay. But now if you notice the cost is going up more quickly because we're taking every time the gallon, anytime we have a gallon, we're taking it times three to get our cost. So I'm not going to count by ones. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to fit all my numbers on there. What we're going to do is since we are multiplying by three each time, that tells us what we're going to count by for our Y. We're going to count by threes because we're multiplying our gallons of gas by three each time. So notice you do not need to have both of these scales be the same. Nine times out of 10, your X is gonna just count by ones, and then to figure out your Y, you're just gonna figure out, well, what were you multiplying by each time? And that's what you're gonna count by. So you're just counting by three. So we have three, six, nine, 12, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Again, if you need to pause the video to number your scale, please do. So now that we have our graph set up, right? Like that's the hardest part is getting your graph set up. Now that you have it set up, now you can graph just the numbers on the table. So I need to graph this first point, right? These are kind of like our ordered pairs. So I've got one gallon of gas is going to cost me $3. So I'm going to go on my gallons of gas, which is my X. I'm going to run before I jump. 
I'm going to go over to the one here and that is going to cost three dollars, right? I'm getting that from the table up here. So I don't need to count up three tick marks because remember I'm counting by threes over here. So all I need to do is go over one and up one and there is my mark right there. Okay, so make sure you put your dot right there. The next one on my table is 515. So when we have five gallons of gas, it costs fifteen dollars. So we're going to go over to the five because we've got to run before we jump. And then we're going to go up until we get to 15, right? Which is going to be right there. So I mark my spot. Okay, we've got two more. We've got six and 18, so same idea. I'm gonna go over to the six and then up to 18. So it's kind of near where my five and 15 was. And I'm gonna plot my point right there. And last one is eight and 24. So I gotta go over to eight, up to 24. So right here and mark my spot. Now, if you notice, these do make a line when you if you were to like connect them all, they'd make this straight diagonal line. Go ahead and draw that arrow through it like that because, for example, let's say I got three gallons of gas. I could, or it would cost me $9, which is going to fall in this line. Or let's say I don't, like, when you go to the gas station, you don't get uh, an even amount of gallons all, a lot of times. A lot of times you get, like, part of a gallon. So, for example, let's say I got, like, four and a half gallons. Well, that's going to cost me right here on this line, I can figure it out because it'll fall on this line. It's going to be that 4.5 times 3 and that's going to land me on our line here. So that's why we can draw that line because we could have part of a gallon or part of a dollar and it's going to all fit on this line. If we were talking about something that could not be broken down into parts like that, then we would not draw a line. That's I'm not being too picky about that. I just wanted you to be aware. Okay. All right. So you do have, um, some practice to go try. There's two more problems on your own that you do need a teacher signature on before you move on to level two formative. You can do it. That was the last new part. Good luck. I know you got this.